Today, Hillary Clinton revealing her official economic plan. You can't solve our problems without economic growth. Growth creates jobs and prosperity, and that is the glue that binds our society together. Okay, so, Stuart, you say there's a clear choice. Hillary Clinton wants to make us more like Europe. Donald Trump wants to make us uh, grow again. That's my opinion. With, with uh, all sorts of stuff. What's the matter with Europe? What's the matter with Europe? <laughs> What's the matter with Europe for the when, folks at home? You, I you remember you're us. a refugee. <laughs> I am a refugee from European socialism. It's not a sustainable model. They're bankrupt. Many of those societies are bankrupt. They're super They've had in the no rail. growth, virtually no growth, for many, many years. Their population is actually declining and it's aging. That is not a sustainable economic model. It's just not. It might sound in terms of growth and expansion. Donald Trump would lower taxes for individuals and for corporations. He would cut regulation. He would encourage domestic energy expansion and output. That's a, that's a recipe for vigorous growth in the economy. And look, you know what, they're in decline. What people have, have, what I've heard people say they like Donald Trump's plan because he takes it from four brackets to three brackets. Everyone gets, gets benefits because everyone's going to have their taxes lowered. Trump wants to cut taxes for the super rich. Well, we're not going there, my friends. I'm telling you right now, we're going to write fairer rules for the middle class and we are going to raise taxes on the middle class. <laughs> Trump wants to cut taxes for the super rich. Well, we're not going there, my friends. I'm telling you right now, we're going to write fairer rules for the middle class and we are going to raise taxes on the middle class. The purpose of the SIP is to, quote, provide accurate and comprehensive information about the income and program participation that has constantly been screamed down, that you constantly call xenophobic, racist, Nazi, whatever. Well, it turns out that intuition, that instinct that you had, yeah, it's correct. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They're laughing at us, at our stupidity. And now they're beating us economically. They are not our friends. Black people and white people can't be unified for Trump. That's bullcrap. Trump refuses to denounce the KKK. How do you feel about the recent endorsement from David Duke? I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. Okay? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go into the details. I'm just going to say that the Trump is In the absence of the truth, bullcrap prevails. So here come the truth jokers. Look at what's been going on. All the people are coming out, the dang walking dead. You know, the people who don't pay attention to politics until the election cycle comes around. And they get so emotional. They, they get all into it and, you know, they pick their sides and they fight against each other. But in reality, they ain't getting nowhere with it. So you're falling for the little racist angle. You're fighting each other, you're ripping up the signs. And, oh yeah, let me go to this. This, this is something here. How is it that this little fake joker right here comes out and endorses Donald Trump? Now, elections are all about perception. So when you see this guy endorsing Donald Trump, you say, oh, well Donald Trump is a racist because he's endorsing Donald Trump. But here's the thing. What is KKK? Well, the KKK was created by the Democrats. 
KKK still belongs to the Democrats. So this guy right here knows that if he comes out and throws his support behind Donald Trump, it's going to get the reaction of this. That's the only reason why he's coming out and doing that. Lyndon B. Johnson did the same thing in the 1964 election. He made an ad saying that Barry Goldwater was endorsed by the KKK. But how is he going to say that when the KKK is a democratic entity? They are the prop, and I'm talking about the KKK. The Democrats are the most racist party in history, the only party in American history to kill black people because they wanted them to vote Democrat. Lena B. Johnson said, I'll have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. When he was talking about N-words, he was talking about black people. And black people, they still vote Democrat. Neither have you I! Don't know me. You're fucking a white male! No. Today, our country has lost a true American original. My friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. There are white... I've seen a lot of white in my time. I admired his tireless advocacy for his West Virginia constituents, his fierce defense of the Constitution and the traditions of the Senate, and his passion for a government that improves the lives of the people it serves. There are white I've seen a lot of white in my time. They mentioned that he once had a fleeting association with a Ku Klux Klan, what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. He was a country boy from the hills and hollows of West Virginia. He was trying to get elected. As Secretary of State, I continue to rely on his advice and counsel. Robert C. Byrd led by the power of his example, and he made all of us who had the honor of serving as his colleagues better public servants and better citizens. Robert C. Byrd left such a legacy. We have given her $20,000 anonymously for her campaign fund. She is friends with the Klan. The KKK endorses Hillary Clinton. They're about illegal immigrants. She doesn't. She's acting like she does so she can get into office. She's a Democrat. The Klan has always been a Democratic organization people in the streets Hitler not remind you of that does Trump not remind you of that no explain to me how Trump is like Hitler mass deportion there isn't any uh, sensible approach except to do what we need to do simultaneously you know secure our borders with technology personnel uh, physical barriers if necessary in some places and we need to have tougher employer sanctions and we need to try to incentivize Mexico to do more. If they committed transgressions of whatever kind, they should be obviously deported. <laughs> Sessions went on to explain that Obama's immigration policy is killing wages, particularly for immigrants and minority groups because the flow of labor is so large, it floods the labor market and depresses wages. Of the Daily Caller, Donald Trump is going to do better with Hispanics and African Americans because he's talking about things that will really make their wages go up. I do not support gay marriage. I, I live in New York. Uh, New York is uh, a place with lots of gays, and I think it's great. I'd be sure to we had mass abortion, so obeying the law. Donald Trump wants to obey the laws on immigration. Donald Trump wants to obey... And basically, fuck with the one person who stands in the way of us being ruled by Donald Trump. Just before I came in here, we thought we'd do a little search in our files, and, and I do notice that a, a William Mayer uh, gave a Clinton-affiliated entity a million dollars. Uh, now, it's a, it's a William Mayer um, in L.A., where that, at the time money came, uh, perhaps you would like to comment, is that you? Yeah, yeah I don't think... For the KKK, Hillary Clinton is our choice. You said you were 
opening, open to naming Senator Cruz as your running mate. I did. So why would you be willing to put somebody well, who's a maniac you, one heartbeat away from the president? I've gotten to know him over the too. last three or four days. He has a wonderful temperament. <laughs> Small He's just day. fine. Don't worry about it. Senator Cruz, you have not been willing to attack Mr. Trump in public, but you did you question his attack. judgment in having control of you did you question his attack. judgment in you question his attack. judgment despite its impressive length it's a nimble navigator and some can be highly venomous so all I'm doing is telling the truth. just like the tarantula it's killing the centipede has two curved hollow fangs which inject paralyzing venom. This one I like. Here you go, folks. Enjoy it. Yeah, maybe get this the remnant out. Is a predator. Yeah, boy. Get him out of here. Get out. Five hundred and five billion. And by the way, I don't like this mic. Whoever the hell bought this mic system, don't be the son of a bitch to put it in. I'll tell you. These people. No, this mic is terrible. Stupid mic keeps popping. Do you hear that, George? Don't pay him. Wow. Why don't you apologize for her? No, I won't right do that now. because I said nothing wrong. This is a tough business. Oh, yeah. oh, oh no, you're a tough guy. Yeah, and, it's, and we need to have a... You can't stump the Trump. The field of candidates is getting smaller. And with every day, the end of the road gets closer. Tonight, the road leads to South Carolina, and they look toward a brighter future. I'm Neil Cavuto, alongside my friend and co-moderator, Maria Bartiromo, businessman Donald Trump. <laughs> Texas Senator Ted Cruz. <laughs> Carson. <laughs> Governor Jeb Bush. So let's get started. But the good news is, the next commander in chief is standing on this stage. How do you attack a network that does not respect national borders? Well, I'm very happy to get a question this early on. I was going to ask you to wake me up when the time came. <laughs> but what he's touching, talking about, I think, has got merit. And I'm not putting that tariff or whatever he's saying here, but here's what I am saying. I'm liking him for tonight. For too long. <laughs> no, for too long, what happens is somebody dumps their product in our country. Thanks, Trump, for no stump. And we have to use our great business people and not political hacks to negotiate with these Here, guys. Wait, apart, wait, wait. From, apart from the higher prices on, on Guac. According to Facebook, it was the most talked about moment online of your entire campaign, with more than 10 million people talking about the issue. Is there anything you've heard that makes you want to rethink this position? No. No. <laughs> Donald, Donald, can, can I, I, I hope... Last week, the New York Times editorial board quoted you as saying that you would impose up to a 45% tariff on Chinese goods. And that's wrong. They were wrong. It's the New York Times. They're always wrong. Well, <laughs> they were wrong. So now, you never wait, advocated wait a putting we've a lost, tariff on We've lost to anywhere punish. between four and seven million jobs because of China. What I said this, we have very unfair trade with China. A million dollars a year. I'm sorry, sir. You, 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 you stumped me. But I, I do want to understand that. Well, it's not that complicated, okay. actually. Then I apologize. Okay. But then I want to understand if you, Governor. Governor Kasich, as someone who has to deal with controversial police shootings. Get him out of here. Get out. All right. Uh, and we don't need a weak person being president of the United States, OK? Because that's what we'd get if it were just. I'll tell you what. We don't need that. We don't need, we don't need that. 
We don't need foolish guag bull merchants. President of the United States, okay? Because there that's what we'd way. get if it were just. I'll tell you what. We don't need that. We don't need that. That's, that's essentially what we have now. That's, that's essentially what we have now, and we don't need that. And that's why we're in the trouble that we're now. And by the way, Jeff, you mentioned Boeing. Take a look. They order planes. They make Boeing build their plant in China. They don't want them made here. They want those planes made in China. A mile that's not the way the game is supposed Bush. to be played. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Very briefly. Hey, I, I, my name was ahead. mentioned. My name was mentioned here. The simple you fact is that the, uh, the plane that's being built here is being sold to China. You can, if you, you, you flew in with your 767, didn't you, right there, right next to the plant? No, the new planes, I'm not talking about now, I'm talking about yeah, in the future. They're building massive plants in China because China does not want Boeing building their planes here. They want it built in China because China happens to be smart the way they do it, not the way we well, do it. When you head back to the airport Thank tonight, go check and see oh, yeah, what I'll, the I'll plan. check for you. Check it out. Senator, briefly. Thanks for coming back. That Donald is dismayed that his poll numbers are falling in Iowa. Because Donald's mother was born in Scotland. She was naturalized. Now, Donald. But I was issue, born here. On the issue Remember. of citizenship, Donald. Big difference. On the in Iowa now, as you know, Ted, in the last three polls, I'm beating you. So, you know, you shouldn't misrepresent how well you're doing with the polls. You don't have to say that. In fact, I was all for you until you started doing that because that's a misrepresentation. The fact is, and if for some reason he beats the rest of the field, he beats the rest of the field, if for some, see, they don't like that. They don't like that. But, no, they don't like that he beats the rest of the field because they want me. But, <laughs> but if for some, he never had a chance. Now he's doing better. He's got probably a four or 5% chance. Let me follow up and switch gears. Senator Cruz, you suggested Mr. Trump, quote, embodies New York values. Could you explain what you mean by that? You know, I think most people know exactly what New York values are. Um, and I was asked what I thought of that, and I said, well, if he wanted to play a song, maybe he could play New York, New York. And, and you know, the concept of New York values is not that complicated to figure out. Uh, not to, and, and I guess I can, can frame it another way. Not a lot of conservatives come out of Manhattan. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hold it, you dummies. Grace, uh, look, in New York, we took a big hit with the World Trade Center. Worst thing ever, worst attack ever in the United States. Worse than Pearl Harbor because they attacked civilians. They attacked people having breakfast. But when you want to knock New York, you got to go through me. New York is an amazing place with amazing people. So, conservatives actually do come out of Manhattan, including William F. Buckley and others, just so you understand. And just so, if I could, because he insulted a lot of people, I've had more calls on that statement that Ted made. Uh, New York is a great place. It's got great people. It's got loving people, wonderful people. When the World Trade Center came down, I saw something that no place on earth could have handled more beautifully, more humanely than New York. You had two, 100. We'll have a lot of men down here right now. We have over 100 and we have about 125 coming. So we'll have a couple of hundred people down here. And they're very brave and what they're doing is amazing. And uh, we will be involved in some form in helping to reconstruct. You had two 110 story buildings come crashing down. I saw them come down. Thousands of people killed. And the cleanup started the next day, and it was the most horrific cleanup probably in the history of doing this and in construction. I was down there, and I'd never seen anything like it. And the people in New York fought and fought and fought, and we saw more death and even the smell of death. Nobody understood it, and it was with us for months, the smell, the air. And we rebuilt downtown Manhattan, and everybody in the world watched, and everybody in the world loved New York and loved New Yorkers. And I have to tell you, that was a very insulting statement that Ted made.
pwned Cruz's bones with that pwned, pwned his bones with that 9/11 um, throwback. I think yeah. it was Brills. You're having a hard time tonight. It's over, Ted. I have the hot balls. You underestimate my power. At probably a four or five percent chance. Don't try it. <laughs> My vice presidential candidate. It was said that you would destroy this establishment. Not join them. Make America great again. But you made me stump you. And then laid him by the fireside with some honey and some milk. Side the vicious snake. Can't stump the trunk. Confiscate his coat. What do you think about the mosque controversy? I think we need more mosques. Why? So we can show the world that we are not bigots. But don't you know what happens in countries where Muslims rule? I don't care. We need more hope and change. That is crazy. There are too many Christian fundamentalists trying to impose their views on us through government. What? They are trying to take over America. We need more Muslims to show the world how multicultural we are. But don't you read about what is happening in Europe because of rampant Muslim immigration? You must be a bigot. Please. Let's talk about the issues. These events are important. No. You should not be allowed to speak. You must have supported Bush. You're a hate monger. But I'm trying to have a dialogue with you about the issues. Your hate speech should be banned. But don't you know that Sharia law is being implemented in many European countries with large Muslim immigrant populations? I don't care. You're a warmonger. But in many European cities, there are now no-go zones where non-Muslims and police cannot enter. Islam is a religion of peace. We should welcome all of them. Yes, but don't you think we should carefully screen which immigrants come here from Muslim countries? No. You spread hate. I will report you for hate speech. But don't you think Muslims need to reform their religion to embrace all cultures and renounce violence among them? No, Muslim immigrants should come. We are a nation of immigrants. But aren't you aware of the human rights abuses in many Muslim countries, where women don't have rights and are tortured? No. Conservative Christians oppress women's rights because they don't want women to have abortions. You must be a radical right-winger. I simply want to have a dialogue about the issues affecting the world. I'm going to call campus security and have you arrested for hate speech. No, I'm not condoning hatred towards Muslims. I'm simply addressing a global concern regarding the violence and their religion. There are many who want to destroy Israel and America. You're a fascist. Doesn't it feel like every time you want to have a sensible discussion about facts and reality and trends within society, particularly when it overlaps with any kind of politics, don't you feel like any time you want to have a sensible discussion, all of these hysterical brain parasite 
Maybe you can just say, like, what are the problems in America? Hillary can make a case because she can say something that's actually political. This guy don't even care. Tell me the issues in America. What are the issues in America? First off, people like me are dying. The banks running everything. Anybody else want to get in on okay. this? I know, so I know. Donald Trump wants to bring jobs back to America. You say jobs are an issue. Donald Trump says he wants to bring them back. I didn't say nothing about a job. How? He quit, he quit sending jobs to China. We have companies going to Mexico. What are you talking about? Are you even listening? I said people like me are dying. American companies. You want to know why everything you pick up says made in China? That's because other companies devalue their currency. And so companies can make a greater profit over. That's Donald Trump wants to bring it back. Trump is capitalist. That's this capitalism. is America. Capitalism. Capitalism is people who cannot exist like without exploitation. Didn't think so. Didn't think Let's so. Let's bring it back to black people being killed by police. Okay. What has Trump said about that? What about white people being killed by police? Fuck off! Black people! That's not racist, though! The junior senator from Alabama went on to predict that Trump can turn the economy around for those on the lowest rung of the economic ladder very quickly.